Very rarely do we hear about African figures who, previously enslaved, became rulers in their own right. When it did occur, it usually involved an enslaved individual who liberated themselves by establishing a powerful maroon settlement in the Caribbean or Latin America. And so today, we're going to speak about a man who accomplished something very similar on the African continent. <laughs> By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to everything in the description box below. Jaja of Apobo was from Igbo land in eastern Nigeria. He was born into the Isu clan with a father who was most likely a farmer and may have supplemented his work with trading or blacksmithing. For whatever reason, by the age of around 12, Jaja was sent to live with his relatives where he was unfortunately kidnapped and enslaved. He was sold to a man named Odiari from the royal house of Opobo. With the abolition of slavery during that time in 1807, the trade in palm oil became prevalent and the primary source of this oil was amongst the Igbo people. Jaja proved to be very capable, intelligent and shrewd. He was said to be alert and virile which persuaded his master to retain him and make him a member of his household. Jaja was taken to Bani, where the ritual of shaving his head was performed, therefore making him a bona fide member of the Apobo house in the town of Bani, a major trading center just upstream from the Bight of Biafra. Through his relationships and acumen, Jaja was ultimately put in charge of the trading interests of the house of Alali, and he flourished. He became so wealthy and prominent that he was elected head to the ruling Annie Pebble House, and so he officially became a local ruler. Jaja quickly began to extend his rule by absorbing other houses. He increased trading operation in the hinterland through contact with European traders, precipitating a power struggle and civil war between the rival houses at Bani. In the late 1860s, Jaja led a breakaway of some houses and founded a new settlement, Apobo. He proclaimed himself King Jaja of Apobo and declared the new state independent of Bani in 1870. Jaja was therefore able to control the trade and politics in the Niger Delta. More houses continued to join Jaja and the British had no choice but to acknowledge him as King of Apobo. Initially, King Jaja's relationship with the British flourished. He even sent troops to aid the British in their war against the Ashanti during the Third Ashanti War. As a side note, I often mention the complexities of colonization. The idea that Europeans simply came in with guns and took the land is an oversimplification. Africans assisted Europeans in a piecemeal process in taking over the territories of various ethnic groups and King Jaja's assistance of a British victory over the Ashanti is a patent example of that. Anyway, King Jaja was awarded a sword of honor by Queen Victoria, revealing their complementary relations. However, King Jaja was no pushover and sought to remain sovereign and powerful. His power increased with the economic moves he was making, cutting out a good portion of his reliance on European middlemen. As time passed, the relationship became more complex, and the British requested that King Jaja's territory become a protectorate. He asked for clarity from the British, and they assured him that his sovereignty was not threatened. Still, these assurances did not appease Jaja. He demanded that the term protectorate be removed from the agreement, and in addition, requested that clauses stipulating for the promotion of free trade in Apobo be removed. In 1885, a treaty of protection was signed according to Jaja's terms, and thus, 
Jaja was granted British protection without surrendering his economic or political rights in Opobo. Ultimately, the British insisted that they must receive uninterrupted access to his region and threats were made. King Jaja's monopoly was reportedly causing the British a loss in revenue. In September 1887, Council Johnson went to Opobo with all the troops he could command. In a cunning device, King Jaja was invited aboard a British ship to seek a peaceful means of resolving the conflicts. An unexpecting Jaja cooperated, but was immediately seized and exiled. King Jaja was exiled to Accra, Ghana, ironically the same region he helped to conquer. He was later exiled to the Caribbean and ultimately ended up on a Spanish island where he passed away. The people of Opobo protested and demanded that his body be sent back home to receive a king's burial, and in 1891, he was returned to Opobo. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.